How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I appreciate everything that they've done for us down here. And I'm glad to be helping without the head. Excellent. I notice you've got the hat there. I'm a big fan of hats. I want to show everybody. Unfortunately, it's not the original. Mm -hmm. But it is a hat. <laughs> it is, it a hat, is the yeah. same color. Uh -huh and the same style, mm -hmm. but it's not the same hat. Yeah. Did you, do you have any of the original uh, props? or The uh, only thing or I have left from the film as memorabilia is my high-powered rifle. Mm -hmm. And that is for sale, but it's a very high-priced item. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was a custom-built rifle made for me by a gunsmith from West Newton, Pennsylvania by the name of Philip Kernow. Mm -hmm. And it is a semi-bull sporter. I don't know how many of you are familiar with firearms, but its stock is glass bedded, free floating with four end pressure, has a Monte Carlo cheek, uh, cheek piece, hand checkering, hand uh, piece and forearm. Mm -hmm. It's a Douglas Star steel barrel, semi bull sporter barrel, with the Manlicker Mauser FN 400 action. Its accuracy from sandbags with the Bueller basin rings and micro dial crosshair scope. 100 yards sandbag rest, three shot group inside of a dime, and it's 300 Winchester Magnum in caliber. I can load it down to hunt groundhog, or I can beef it up to hunt grizzly. Yeah. Same rifle. So definitely take down a zombie if you needed to. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. No, uh, zombie seems to uh, never really go out of style, and it kind of gets bigger. And Now with Walking Dead, it's really big again. Are, do you like these uh, pr the new zombie projects? Or? Not too many of them. Yeah. I've never watched an episode of The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. But some of the other zombies and horror films that I've seen are not, in my opinion, horror films. Mm -hmm. There are a bunch of scenes strung together that exploit sensationalism and gore that they're calling a movie. Mm -hmm. But what makes a movie is the story. Mm -hmm. Without a story, you don't have a film. Yeah. Most, a lot of them do not have a story. Mm -hmm. If it has a story, it could deserve credibility. Mm -hmm. So, that's besides, my besides, opinion. besides playing the sheriff, of course, uh, what else did you do on uh, Night Living Dead? Oh, boy. <laughs> I was the production manager. Mm -hmm. I owned stock in it. I crewed on the picture. I was a member of the, the uh, executive board. I am a... What the hell am I? <laughs> uh, well, I'm a member of the cast. I played the sheriff, crewed on it, mm -hmm. things like that. I made seven pictures altogether, not all horror. Yeah. And uh, I'm currently rewriting a screenplay that I wrote that won Silver Award in international competition for best screenplay comedy. It's a situation comedy that uses gambling as a vehicle and deals with misadventures of two friends. I call it, We'll Try Again. There are people who want it, but they want it for free. Mm -hmm. It's is a business, not a charity. Right. I'm not giving it away to anyone for free. Mm -hmm. When I'm done with the rewrites, I'll market it or attempt to market it, and it won't be low budget. I have a trilogy that I've written under the jacket of Madness Times 3. The first leg deals with a teenage sociopath. The second deals with a, uh, 
obsessive compulsive who's out to destroy the government and big lumber and prevent them from entering into contracts to harvest fir trees in the Pacific Northwest. And the third, I call Save the Crows, is about two friends over the course of a car ride. One crosses the line from sanity to insanity and in a schizophrenic state, he tries to kill both of them and the driver has to fight him off, get him home safely. And on the back burner, if I get through all this and I'm still alive, I have an unsolved murder mystery that I have exclusive rights to that I am to write. As far as the rest of it goes, I'm also an award-winning still photographer. And my still photography, I compete internationally, and I'm a member of the Photographic Society of America. Mm -hmm through the Washington Camera Club, which is an affiliate branch. Yeah. And, um, we recently lost uh, Bill Heinzman. I was wondering if you had any uh, memory you'd like to share. Yeah, that was unfortunate and unexpected. Mm -hmm. And it's a sad event. Our attrition is taking its toll. As an example, on our way here to this convention, we're near just below Charlotte, but not yet in Georgia, when we received a call on the road that informed us of another death, Rudolph Ritchie Jr. And that was totally unexpected and caught us by surprise. And so far to date, Keith Wayne, the fellow who played the boyfriend, and got blown up in the truck mm -hmm. is gone. Dwayne Jones, the male lead, is gone. Mm -hmm. He died pretty young, too. He died very young. He died in 1985 or 86. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he died, or I assume it was a heart attack. I'm not certain that's accurate. Mm -hmm. Then my deputy and our financial secretary and treasurer, Vincent Servinsky, is gone. Carl Hardman, who played Harry Cooper, the husband in the basement, is gone. Marilyn Eastman, the woman who played his wife, is not in the best of health. She can no longer do these, and she's living in Florida with her son, and she's very ill. And then, of course, Bill Heinzman. So, attrition is taking its toll. Yeah. And it's sad. It's it's unavoidable. It's a part of life, a sad part of life. But what are you going to do? Um, what's been the highlight for you for this weekend here at Days of the Dead? The people have treated us well. Mm -hmm. And it seems like everyone who comes by is glad we're here, as we are glad to be here. Yeah. And we try to do whatever we can, wherever we go, to promote whatever it is we're promoting and make a contribution toward it being a success. Mm -hmm. Do you find a lot of the, uh, the current directors and actors, you know, uh, you know, grew up watching your film and like that they'll come up and show a lot of respect to you guys, maybe ask for advice? I don't know that they ask for advice. I think they look for ways to steal. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. But that's part of the business too. Mm -hmm. But you just have to remember, I tell many people this, but in Vulgate parlance, there exists an expression the bigger the buck, the better the thief. Mm -hmm. The motion picture business is a multi billion dollar annual industry. The finest thieves in the world work there. They don't use a gun or a knife and say, this is a stick-up. They use an ink pen and a contract and say, let's negotiate. Mm -hmm. And if they say, trust me, don't walk out of the room, run. <laughs> right. And we know Night of the Living Dead has had its share of uh, thieves over the years. Yes, and it's still ongoing. Mm -hmm. as, a, as again, two people were here at my table earlier who told me they're involved or will be involved 
in the upcoming remake, Night of the Living Dead 2012. I think it yeah, should be shot in Florida. A, that was that's a 3D not, version, yeah. That's not authorized. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're doing it anyway. Yeah. Now, do you think, you know, not only is it just wrong to do, when, if, you, if you had, like, pride in your work, you think, you know, you wouldn't want to do something like that? If you had respect. To steal it? Yeah. No, I don't want to steal off anyone. Mm -hmm. I want my own original material and my own thoughts and ideas. Mm -hmm. But once I have those and it is done, I want what I earned. And I want it honest. And I want it protected. Mm -hmm. Ancillary rights have cost us millions. Yeah. Piracy of the work itself has cost us millions. The distributor stealing the money has cost us multi, multi millions. I've had people come to my table wearing a t shirt with my image on the front and a, the line, they're dead, they're all messed up on the bottom. And on the back of the shirt is Night of the Living Dead. That's not an authorized product. Yeah. We don't get any rights, we don't get any compensation of any kind. Mm -hmm. Not just me. Image 10 Productions. Yeah. That's us. We made it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's an iconic film that everyone knows. And yeah. None of them are saying it's theirs. Yeah. But they're all either, quote, borrowing from. Mm -hmm. Everything, I, I'm convinced, everything out there today that exists was either influenced by or stolen from or is a product of this picture. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should have all been living in a house on a hill, driving a Rolls Royce, never having to work again in our life unless we wanted to. Yeah. As it is, we're in a small room eating sardines and trying to sell mem what memorabilia we have left. Yeah. And it's sad. Mm -hmm. But it angers me. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to anger you, and I hope we can leave this at a, at a high note. That's it has been a beast. real honor for me to talk to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Take care. You too. And good luck. Thank you. Your heart laid dead inside.